If aliens came to Earth and were observing humans, would they notice our distributed cognition first or our individual cognition first? What is the most notable thing about us humans? Is it our ability to individually do well in IQ tests or whatever? Yeah. Uh, or puzzle solve? Or is it this thing we're doing together? I think most of our problem solving is done in distributed cognition. Uh, like, look around. <laughs> you didn't make this equipment. You didn't build this place. You didn't invent this language that we're both sharing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and now there's there's more specific and precise experimental evidence coming out. Um Let's take a standard task that people, reasoning task, I won't even do the details, it's called the waste and selection task. And you give it to people, highly educated psychology students, premier universities across the world. You've been, we've been doing it since the 60s. It replicates and replicates. And only 10% of the people get it right. You put them in a group of four and you allow them to talk to each other the success rate goes to 80%. That's just one example of a, a, now a phenomenon that's coming to the fore. By the way, do you know if a similar experiment has been done on a group of engineering students for psychology students? Is there a, a major group difference as an IQ between those two? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, all right, so there is a lot of evidence that there's power to this distributed cognition. Now, what about this mechanism, this fascinating mechanism of the ants interacting with each other, sure. the dialogue. Yeah. I use the word discourse or dialogue for just people having a conversation. But, and this is deeply inspired by um, Socrates and Plato, especially the Platonic dialogues. And I'm sure we've all had this. And so give me a moment because I want to build onto something here. We've participated in conversations that took on a life of their own and took us both in directions we did not anticipate afforded us insights that we could not have had on our own. And we don't have to have come to an agreement, but we were both moved and we were both drawn into insight. And we feel like, wow, that was one of the best moments of my life because we feel how that introduced us to a capacity for tapping into a flow state within distributed cognition that puts us into a deeper relationship with ourselves, with another person and potentially with the world. That's what I mean by dialogos. And so for me, I think dialogos is more important. Huh, boy, I could just hear, I, I'm sorry, I can hear Jordan and Jonathan in my head right now, but I think it's more- I, I hear them all the time. <laughs> I, I just wish they would shut up in my head <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so what, uh, what are they saying to you in your head? What they're saying is, well, see, that's what the most recent conversation was about. I was trying to say that I don't think mythos is, I think mythos is really important. I think these kinds of narratives are really important. But I think this ability to connect together in distributed cognition, collective intelligence, and cultivate a shared flow state within that collective intelligence so it starts to ramp up, perhaps towards collective wisdom, I think that's more important because I think that's the basin within which the myths and the rituals are ultimately created and when they function. Like, like a myth is like a public dream. It depends on distributed cognition and it depends on people enacting it and getting into mutual flow states. Mm -hmm. So the, the highest form of dialogue is, of conversation is this flow state and that it forms the foundation for myth building. I think so. I think so. Uh, so that communitas, that's Victor Turner's phrase, and he specifically linked it to flow, and I study flow scientifically, that, you know, that wi within distributed cognition as, 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 as the home, as the generator of mythos and ritual, and those are bound together as well, I think that's fundamentally correct. You know what's the cool thing here? Because I'm a huge fan of podcasts uh, and audiobooks, but podcast in particular is relevant here, is there's a third person in this room listening now. Mm. And 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 they're also in the flow state. Yes, yes. Like I'm I'm close friends with a lot of podcasts. They're, they don't know I exist. I just listen to them and because I've been in so many flow states with them. 
Yeah, I was like, yes, 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 this is good. <laughs> but they don't, they don't know I exist. But they are in conversation with me ultimately. And think, think like of what what that's doing. You've got like you've got dialogues, and then you've got this meta dialogue, like you're describing. And think about how things like podcasts and YouTube they break down old boundaries between the private and the public, between writing and oral speech. So we have the dynamics of living oral speech, but it has the permanency of writing. Like we're, 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 we're in the midst of creating a vehicle, uh, right? A, a, and a medium for distributed cognition that breaks down a lot of the categories by which we organized our cognition. I mean, because of the tools of YouTube and so on, just the the network, the the graph of how quickly the distributed cognition can spread is really powerful. And just a huge amount of people have listened to your lectures. Yeah. I've listened to your lectures, but I've experienced them, as, at least in your style. There's something about your style. It felt like a conversation. Yeah. Like it felt like at any point, moment I could interrupt you and say something. <laughs> oh, and I was just listening. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. saying that because yeah. I aspire to being genuinely as Socratic as I can yes. when I'm doing this. Yeah, there was that sense actually, as I'm saying it now, why was that? It didn't feel like sometimes lectures are kind of, uh, you you know, you came, you come down with the commandments and you're just yeah, going to list yeah, them. Yeah. But there was a sense like, I mean, I think it was the excitement that you have, like you have to understand. And also the fact that you were kind of, I think thinking off the top of your head sometimes. Yes. There was a, you were interrupting yourself with thoughts. Yes, yes. You're playing with thoughts. Yes, like yeah, you're yeah. you're reasoning through things often. Like I'm, you had, well, you, you referenced a lot of books, so surely you were re extremely well prepared, and you were referencing a lot of ideas. But then you were also struggling in the way to present those ideas. Yes, there was, uh, and so the jazz, like the jazz, my, of it, the yeah. jazz, and, and getting into the flow state, and and trying to share in a participatory and perspectival fashion the learning with the people rather than just pronouncing at them.